everyone and welcome to the Postgraduate Psychology webinar. Thank you so much for joining us here today at our Postgraduate um, Virtual Fair. My name is Vishnu and I'm currently a student ambassador at Macquarie University and I will be your host for this evening. Before we begin, on behalf of this gathering, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the First Nations peoples of Australia and elders past, present and emerging. Finally, just a few housekeeping tips before we get rolling with the presentation. If you have any questions for our lovely presenter Jo throughout the presentation, please pop them into the chat box you see down the bottom and they will be answered either in the Q&A session after or by our team via the chat feature. Also, please ensure that your microphones are muted during the presentation and also be aware that we are recording this session. So if you prefer not to be recorded, please mute your videos and your microphones. Finally, one last thing, if you have any more unanswered questions for our team after the presentation, we'll be sharing our contact details so you can get in touch with us later on. And without further ado, I'm going to pass over to Joe, who's going to tell you all about our postgraduate psychology programs. Great, thanks very much, Vishna, and thanks everyone for joining us this afternoon to hear what Macquarie University has to offer by way of postgraduate courses. Um, I'm an Associate Professor in the Department of Psychology and I've worked uh, at Macquarie for two and a half years now. Um, I thought it would be a good idea just to revisit while we're all here and the main reason is of course because you're wanting to think about different ways of becoming a psychologist. But it can be very confusing to figure out what are the pathways and what do you need to do, what are the prerequisites. So I'm hoping to answer a lot of those questions today for you. If by chance I'm not answering the questions and you've got more than, as uh, Vishnu said, then please take the opportunity to uh, post those queries on the chat box and we'll come back and revisit those at the end of the presentation. So Macquarie University has quite a good selection of postgraduate courses in psychology. So you can train to be a generalist psychologist, but you can also claim train to be a clinical neuropsych, an org psych or a clinical psych. So there's lots of different reasons why you might choose Macquarie, besides the fact that we're very well connected, not just to other universities, but also other partner organisations. But one of the reasons that I like to work at Macquarie as a uh, academic is because I think we really value students. We value uh, good teaching and we value good teachers. So there's a real opportunity to learn from some of the best in the business and a real appreciation of what it's uh, like to be a psychologist in practice, um, as well as a student. I think the other thing I really like about Macquarie is its focus on translational research. And what I mean by that is that a lot of the research that we do has is very applied and it has real world relevance. So you'll find that a lot of our academics have got practical experience as well as uh, their academic research agendas. Um, we're solving a lot of real world problems here at Macquarie and we hope that you might join us to be a part of that. These are some of the staff members that you would be uh, working with on our postgraduate programs. Um, for, this is another great reason for me to be working at Macquarie. We have a, a lot of really very engaged staff members um, some of the, the people that you'd be working with, you can see in the photographs here. And we're all very accessible, very approachable, very hands-on. We pride ourselves with um, having regular contact with students and taking good care of our students. So you might be wondering what sort of psychologist are you? And might, right now you might not have all the answers. And that's okay, at this stage, um, of your career, asking those questions is a good time to reflect on what you like doing, where you'd like to be doing it, who you'd like to be doing it with. Um, but the great thing about Macquarie is we've got quite a good selection of courses. So I would encourage you to ask a lot of questions to find out more about our programs, figure out which of those courses is the right one for you so that you can make the best decision at this stage of your career. So the pathways to becoming a psychologist are not 
really that self-evident. Even people in the profession who've been working in the area for a long time find this confusing. So I'm going to try and break it down for you today. Um, but uh, please, again, as I've suggested, make sure you post any questions to the chat box if you're confused. But essentially, there's two main pathways to registration as a psychologist. We've got what we call the five plus one pathway, which is our Masters of Professional Psychology, and then the standard degree pathway, which is a six year course, and then two years of supervised practice. So those are our Masters of Clinical Psych, Clinical Neuro and Organisational Psychology. Now you may have heard previously that there was a four plus two pathway. That didn't require you to do any postgraduate study at all. But Psychology Board of Australia is phasing that out as an option. And the only way you'll be able to train to be a psychologist in the future will be via um, postgraduate study. So this flowchart helps you to understand what your options are. So essentially, the only way to get into master's programs is via an honours or a fourth year equivalent. The only way that you can continue with postgraduate studies without that honours year is if you decided to do a master's of research. And if you were doing a master's of research, it's most likely that you wanted just a research career or you wanted to complete a PhD, but becoming a registered psychologist wasn't part of your journey. So for the other programs, an honours degree is required. We take students from honours degrees all over Australia. Um, and it doesn't take very long for students to start to integrate, get to know each other and become part of the same cohort. I take great pride in the fact that by second semester, of the first year, it's impossible to prove or to identify students who've come from different parts of Australia or internationally, just because of the fact that everyone's fully integrated into the course. So you don't find, you know, it's not clicky in terms of the student cohort. Now I'm going to, to zero in on the pathways in a bit more detail now. So you might be wondering, what's the difference between a Master of Professional Psych and then the other three programs? Well, essentially this, the Masters of Professional Psychology course is just a one year program. So you come in and you do a fifth year with us. And then at the end of that course, you leave and you go out into the workforce uh, in an internship. The other programs, the Masters of Neuro, Clinical and Org, you're with us for two years. So that's one big significant difference. The other differences are that at the end of the Masters of Professional Psychology, that's the end of your sixth year, then you'll sit the National Psychology exam in order to become registered as a psychologist. Whereas if you do the other three Masters programs, so that's Clinical Neuro, Clinical Org Psych, then you'll become a registered psychologist at the end of that course. So there are two key differences there. The other difference is that the Master of Professional Psychology has no thesis component, uh, whereas the other programs do. If you are interested in continuing on to do a PhD, then your best option would be the clinical neuro, clinical psych and org psych. You can't count the work you do in the Masters of Professional Psychology towards the combined Masters PhD program. Um, it really depends on whether or not you want to become a generalist or endorsed. And what I mean by that is, if you're endorsed, you call yourself a clinical psychologist or a clinical neuropsychologist or an organisational psychologist. Whereas if you're generally registered, that is by doing the Masters of Professional Psychology, then you just refer to yourself as a psychologist. So now I thought um, it would be worthwhile for me to describe in a bit more detail what these programs entail and how they're the same or different. On each of the slides for the different programs, you'll find the course director's name and their email address. So you might wanna jot that down if you're interested in following up with them after the, um, the presentation today. So this is a, a much newer route for training as a psychologist. 
the five plus one pathway is a much uh, more recent addition to the suite of courses that are offered. Um, during the, the course, you'll do a 300 hour placement with us that we organise for you. And then after that, in the sixth year, you go off to do an internship. During the internship, you find your own internship. The university doesn't manage or monitor that internship for you. That's entirely up to you. And you've got complete choice about where you go on to do that internship. So generalist psychologists make up a majority of the workforce. We're a very flexible group of practitioners. And so at the moment with COVID and with bushfires, a lot of the services that will be provided to the community will be provided by the generalist psychology workforce. Um, we get to work in a broad range of settings and uh, are considered very flexible. One thing to consider, if you're an international student, this is probably not the best course for you. The reason being that we need, in order to, to meet visa requirements, you'd need to be enrolled for a two year program and you'd only be enrolled as a, for a one year program with a Masters of Professional Psych. So this may not be the best option for you. I'm happy to talk to you about that some more if you need a clarification. So you do this course for a couple of different reasons. One of them would be that you knew that you wanted to be a psychologist, but you weren't terribly committed to any one area of endorsement. That is, you knew you just wanted to be a psychologist, but not saw what, sure what, what type. So that would be one more reason. The other reason might be that you're already working in a role that's got a psychological basis. So you might be working in, as a counsellor, for example, in a team with other counsellors or psychologists, and you wanted to get some professional qualifications behind you, and you wanted to become registered. So we see both types of students in our class, those who are already working somewhere else, and those who've not worked as a psychologist before. Um, so you'd be trained to, to meet future work demands. You could end up in health settings like hospitals or clinics, or health promotions. You could be working in schools as an advisor or a counsellor, could be working with uh, youth groups or um, in uh, not-for-profits, um, people like Catholic Care, for example, um, youth on the streets, all of those sorts of programs students would do placements in. Um, you could be working in drug and alcohol counselling, or you might find yourself working in organisations uh, a bit more like organisational psychology, focused on uh, service delivery in areas like selection, training and development, employee assistance programs and rehab. We've had quite a lot of our students go into um, rehab and EAP programs. Our program is only one year long, the MPP, and we have all day workshops on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Um, you're fully prepared for the sixth year internship. It's very hands-on. We don't have any exams per se. Everything that you do by way of assessment is either written assessments, assignments, or live skills practices where you demonstrate your skills and then you're evaluated in real time. So the other three programs, I'm going to give you an overview of what the common themes are and then talk about each one individually. So they have three main components, coursework that you do over a two year period. Then there's a dissertation or thesis. Um, sometimes it can be broken up into two parts. It might be a literature review and then the empirical part of the thesis. Um, and then uh, placements, depending upon the program, between three to four of those. And you, usually one of the first placements that you do will be in the clinic on campus. And it really is a, a absolute state of the art um, area to work in. It's been uh, fully functioning during COVID too, I, I might say. The, um, the clinic itself is very well appointed, looks like professional waiting rooms and professional con consulting rooms. There are super, supervisory staff on hand um, throughout placements to provide advice and feedback to students. Um, so as I'd mentioned earlier, these can be combined if you wanted to do a combined master's PhD. 
And that's based on your performance in the first year. If you do well and you've got a distinction average and you came in with a first class honours degree, then you could consider swapping over to the combined course. All of our uh, staff that teach into the master's programs are also research active. They might be working in um, small private practices or doing consulting work in addition to their academic load. And so their research and their practice constantly informs their teaching. So you're not just talking about things theoretically, but practically as well in terms of how these things would work in practice. So there's a picture of Carolyn, our course director, in case you wanted to contact her. Um, so it's a relatively small profession, uh, clinical psychology. You're mostly dealing with fairly complex presentations um, but with people that are potentially at risk. Um, most likely to find yourself working in hospitals, for example, or it could be schools. A lot of private schools will employ clinical psychologists. You might also be working in research or setting up your own private practice. But most of the work that you do in clinical psychology is going to be with at-risk populations, including um, any specialisations. You could be working in areas like palliative care, geriatrics, you might be working with disadvantaged youth, and it could be a um, combination of uh, design and delivery of intervention plans, as well as assessment to manage and treat those mental health issues across the lifespan. Um, there's, there's lots of staff with varied specialisations in areas like anxiety and depression, post-traumatic stress. Um, so this means that you've got a lot of options when it comes to doing your dissertation. Um, I know that sometimes your honours year can feel a bit like a raffle in terms of who you get for your supervisor and what sort of project you've got to do, but the um, master's uh, thesis that you do will be relevant to the area that you want to be endorsed in and potentially following up on a research interest you have in a population that you uh, plan to practice with in the future. The Clinical Neuropsychology course is a program that focuses on the relationship between brain and behaviour. So a lot of it, uh, a lot of the work that you do in clinical neuropsychology is about assessment and it's very detailed, complex assessments that are used to assess brain damage or where there's brain dysfunction to try to determine what's causing um, that a brain injury and also how that's uh, being manifested in terms of behaviours. So you could be working with a wide range of neurological and psychiatric disorders as a result. So the patients and clients that you could be working with would be uh, adult or uh, paediatric cases with injuries, could be traumatic brain injury, for example, as part of maybe road accidents, um, stroke, uh, epilepsy, substance abuse, dementia, and psychiatric disorders. If you um, work as a neuropsychologist, the employers tend to be uh, tertiary referral hospitals. They tend to be brain injury units, psychiatric hospitals. They could be medico-legal, where you're trying to make assessments of how uh, an injury has impacted someone's performance or their ability to continue to work. You do four placements as part of that program over 18 months, again, starting in the clinic and placements might be in rehabilitation, uh, neurology and neurosurgery, paediatrics, geriatrics and psychiatry. Um, lots of case studies, we, they ha have case meetings as if they were normally in the practice of uh, 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 bringing those to meetings with your peers. So th those are discussed as part of your training. So it's preparing you for when you're working with maybe a multidisciplinary team uh, out in, in practice. Um, lots of options for the clinical neuropsych uh, dissertation as well. That's most relevant to the area that you'd like to practice in. Now, organisational psychology. You might not know a lot about organisational psychology, but basically it's about trying to balance uh, the productivity of organisations with the well-being of its employees. 
and as psychologists, we place the emphasis on well-being and behaviour. So uh, you could be working, for example, with large consulting companies, large banking and financial services businesses. You could also be working in private practice or with smaller private practices with an area of specialisation, for example, coaching or EAP. Uh, there's lots of different areas that you um, cover in organisational psychology. It's really anything to do with improving someone's performance at work uh, and their well-being. So it's everything from how they are recruited and selected into organisations to the assessments that are used to um, decide who, who joins the organisation, uh, how people are developed, uh, leadership, and then at the organisational level, things like um, organisational change um, and organisational development. And then at the individual level, uh, employee wellness and everything in between. So you do four placements in, in roles related to possible employment. So um, a lot of our students will go from their placements into employment with the same organisations. Um, the course is run in very work friendly times in the evenings or full days on Fridays. Um, highly trained staff, all the staff are uh, uh, registered either here or have been registered overseas um, and they also consult to industry or have programs of research that are aligned to their um, areas of interest. Um, lots of opportunities to uh, get employment and uh, have long and successful careers in that area. So Ben also is the program director for this other program called the Graduate Certificate and Diploma of Business Psychology. Overlaps with org psych, but doing that program won't allow you to become a psychologist. It's more a professional um, a degree that you might do out of interest to improve your understanding of organisational psychology rather than being able to necessarily practice as an organisational psychologist yourself. Um, consequently, the uh, entry requirements are a little more relaxed in that you don't necessarily need to have a honours degree, but you will need to have two years of uh, full-time work experience. If you've got an honours degree, you can also gain entry to that program as well if you wanted to, but it wouldn't help to lead you to become a psychologist. Um, for that program, similar to the other programs that we've um, li listed, there's a separate process uh, where you go to the UAC website, identify the program, and then there's a supplementary form that will collect detailed information about your work history and the names of two referees. And we need all that information in order to be able to make a decision. And offers are made in mid-December. So if you wanted to do the certificate, it's four units, seven units for the diploma. So a lot of people are always interested in how do they get into postgraduate psychology? What's required? Well, as I'd suggested to you earlier, you need an APAC approved fourth year of study that you've completed in the last 10 years. International students need to make sure that they've had their qualifications assessed for um, equivalency. And I would suggest that you start that process early. It could take up to three months for the approvals to be given. You need to submit your letter um, of equivalency with your application. You need to have a good academic record. Um, we're looking for good honours results. And this year we'll also be having a look at undergraduate um, performance in case there have been some complications via COVID. Um, we look at referees reports. We hope to have people with strong interpersonal skills. They, you need to be able to demonstrate that you're capable of critical thinking and being able to think independently. If you're an international student or you've completed some of your high school education overseas, you may need to complete an IELTS test um, or its equivalent. And that's not something that we request. That's something that's requested by CYBA in order for you to be able to get uh, provisional registration as a psychologist. So you'll need to 
when you put in your application, include those as well. We do look for life and other experience. Having said that, we have taken some students in to the programs without a lot of work experience. When we talk about work experience, it doesn't have to be paid work experience. It can be volunteer work. It can be uh, counselling, lifeline counselling, for example, uh, highly valued. Also work experience where you might be working as a, um, a mentor or you might be doing advocacy or support work. Um, and it could be a paid opportunity or, or work with an NGO. Um, we get all sorts of different people applying for our programs and it's up to them to convince us that their work experience is relevant. Um, I've had um, students come from customer service roles, for example, who can give me some great examples of how they've had to manage difficult interpersonal uh, interactions in a store. And that's been really helpful for me to understand what their interpersonal capabilities are like. There is a, a selection event that all of our programs have. Um, the org program, the Masters of Professional Psych and the uh, clinical program all have a um, what we call multiple mini interviews, basically an assessment centre. The clinical neuropsych program has interviews. Um, it's a fairly intensive process um, where you're assessed on a range of criteria uh, that we believe helps to predict success as a psychologist. Now, just because I've said it's very competitive, don't be discouraged because if you want to become a psychologist, you've got to apply and that's the, it's just a necessary evil in terms of the next step. But um, some people have come through twice. I've had people that I've accepted this year who've been through the assessment centres previously and um, weren't successful. I gave them some feedback and they came back again. So don't be discouraged if you don't get in the first time, but I would strongly encourage you to apply. Um, there are some Commonwealth sponsored places. That's what CSP means, Commonwealth sponsored places available in the clinical site program, the clinical neuro site program and org site program. We don't have any CSP places for the Masters of Professional Psych, mainly because you're only with us for a year and then next, the next year, hopefully you're out working. So uh, our, our graduates are very employable. Part-time study is definitely possible. We don't have a mid-year intake. There's only one intake and it's at the end of the year, around November, we do our selection, we, we make our decisions and then we start making offers to students um, pretty much after that. You can, as I've mentioned, combine your master's with a PhD, as long as you've got a first class honours degree and you maintain a distinction average during that first year. Um, so as I've mentioned previously, IELTS is requested if you're an international student or you've completed some of your high school um, overseas, in an overseas country. So how do you apply? Well, applications will open in September and they close at the end of October. We can't accept any late applications. It's a very intense process trying to make sure that we get the right people in to interview and the, uh, that we've shortlisted the, uh, n the right people from the complete cohort that's available to us at the time. So, Three steps are involved. Firstly, you've got to do your UAC application submission. Then you've got to get two referees reports. That's the same for all master's programs. The important thing to remember and to do on that system is to nominate the right programs that you want the referees reports to be available to. So if you're interested in applying for two of our programs, then make sure you tick the right boxes to release the results of the referees reports to whoever's managing that program. Um, there's also a supplementary form, that's where we collect details of things like your work experience and uh, your preferences. So uh, towards the end of November, there'll be a selection event and usually you're here for two or three hours to uh, be assessed. Um, if you can't, well, at this stage, we're still debating whether or not we'll do that virtually. 
or face to face, but we'll give people plenty of warning as to what we've decided to do. Each program offers about 20 places, can it be up to 25? So this is one of our students and um, Dean was actually doing uh, Vishnu's job last year. He was helping me with the master's programs and he's gone on to do a clinical neuropsych and uh, complete his studies with us. Um, he's out busy doing placements and um, one of the reasons that he liked doing, uh, one of the reasons he liked doing the clinical neuropsych was just the resources that we had available, the hearing hub and the simulation hub were some of the things that drew him to Macquarie. So as I've said, if you would like to contact the program directors, you most definitely can contact them directly. Thank you.